Dr. Drew, every weeknight, 9 Eastern on HLN. All right, now, Jose, I want to start with something, a little softball to you. Um, you had an unpopular client. A and can you sympathize with what these attorneys went through? That's my first easy question. I don't know if that was an easy question. Uh, you know, I, I disagree with the way this was handled today. Uh, I, I do understand how difficult it is to handle a case like this. But uh, the way these attorneys handled this situation was nothing short of a train wreck, in my opinion. Well, Jose, that's, that is why I'm asking that question. I mean, d d A, I guess it would be, did you ever consider leaving? And B, can you ever imagine a situation where you would call a press conference, announce that you're leaving, and divulge information about the patient's mental health? Is there, I, in your wildest imagination, that, can you imagine that? No, I can't. But, uh, you know, unfortunately... Uh, I had seen another lawyer in Central Florida, who I'd rather not name, do something very similar where they've come out and announced, I'm resigning because the client is not doing this, 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 and that. They're not following my advice. Uh, it, it's not about the lawyer. When you defend someone, you know, we have certain rights in this country, and the one, and the one right that you have is that right to counsel. And it's not about the lawyer. So if, if you're no longer on the case, uh, I think the best way to, to have handled this was to issue a statement. We are no longer the counsel of record for this case, withdrawn, end of discussion. But to go out and to hold a huge press conference like that where plugs are being done for, uh, for local channels and, and voices are being imitated of Congress uh, women and, and talking about specific mental health issues of your, cli of your very own client or former client, uh, it, it goes beyond uh, any rational thought process as far as I'm concerned. Now, what's really right. important it, it, to it, know here, too, is it's also a, an attorney-client confidence. So right. you know, the communications between you and your client aren't the only thing that's protected. It's also the confidences, which means anything that you learn or gain in the process of representing your client uh, you cannot it's divulge privilege. without the client's consent. It's privilege. Exactly. Now that, that's exactly. what, to me, Gene, that's what's killing me. It's, it'd be like if a physician said, oh, you know, I'm not going to be this guy's doctor anymore, but whew, he was a little nutty. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> you and I talk about addiction, exactly. Dr. Drew. Attorneys get addicted to fame. They get a little taste of it. Oh, my gosh. And all of a sudden, they want more and more and more. And they figured, well, this is the end of the line. He's doing his own thing. He's not returning our calls. How can we maximize, at this moment, the situation we've been dealt? Let's go out and hold a 46-minute news conference, knowing that with the intensity focused on this case, the national media is going to cover it live. Of course. You can't buy that kind of publicity. So you think they did it out of a self-serving desire to get the limelight exclusively and in that they slipped and divulged some information that they know is going to get their ass in a sling. I mean the fact is they are going to, I think, Jose you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they have real serious liabilities here, do they not? They do if Mr. Zimmerman chooses to uh, file a complaint against them, but well, I, I don't think that's... I, Jose, he set, up a, he set up a right website now. He set up a website to try to garner uh, some money together. Here's the perfect solution. He can sue his attorneys. And he has quite a case. <laughs> Does he yeah. not? Well, uh, they seem to say, well, we never signed anything on paper. Therefore, therefore, were they even his attorneys? I mean, it's very amorphous. They never met him in person. Uh, they said they only spoke to him on the phone. Uh, so we're dealing with a mega case. And when you're in a mega case, it's a parallel universe. It's like being sucked into a black hole. None of the normal rules of gravity apply. And we're going to see more of this. This is just the beginning, Dr. Drew. Remember the O.J. Simpson case. Remember the Michael Jackson child molestation trial. Yep. Crazy things happen on a daily basis. Well, we, we're talking to someone who was in the middle of that vortex, so I'd like to get some input from him. First of all, it, it, Jose, in Florida, there is no obligation for a written commitment. Is that right? To be an attorney? No, that's correct. Uh, you're, right. you're exactly right, uh, Drew. Uh, there is no requirement, but it, but it is highly ad advised to do so. So most competent attorneys, the very first thing they do is get, is get a retainer agreement signed. The fact that a lawyer would go on television, put their name, their reputation, and er out there in the national spotlight uh, without having a retainer agreement is, is pretty odd. But Jose, with, without you divulging any confidences, what is it like being in the middle of that kind of a maelstrom? I mean, you, you said it's not about the attorney, but you get, you get painted with the brush of your client. You just do. 
I heard Jane say yes, some pretty do. bad things you know, about and, you before and, she was your friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, here, here's here's the thing, though. That's that's the job. <laughs> that's the job of the defender. You have to stand in front of your client, take it on the chin, take it again and again and again and again, and and, and take whatever comes your way to protect the client. And and that's the the amazing part of our constitutional right that you have someone that will stand up for you, fight for you, and and. And, and, and stand in the eye of the storm and defend you. And, and to sit there and, you know, it's a tough job. It, it, I, can't, I can't say that it's not. It keeps you up at night. It's the first thing you think of when you wake up and the last thing before you go to bed. And, and it's a very consuming process. But uh, you got to always remember to step back and just practice law. And, and, and that's the best advice I would give to any attorney uh, about to end, who's about to enter into a situation like this. And, and that is Jose was practice tested. law. His mettle was tested on this one, was hey, it not, Jose, Jay? Uh, has George Zimmerman <laughs> called you yet? <laughs> Are you up for this one, Jose? <laughs> You know, it's bad business practice to ever divulge whether a certain person is calling you or not. Uh -oh. So you'll never get that uh -oh. from me. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, now I'm, I'm going to. I would do that in any case. So don't draw anything from that. <laughs> but but this 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 case. I mean, you know, no one like Casey. But this case is so polarizing. I, I I guess you don't have. I can't expect you to necessarily answer this. But if George Zimmerman showed up on your doorstep said, "I need representation," is that something you could step up and do? Well, I I think. I'm not any, would you, but could you? Any. Well, let me put, let me put it to you this way. And I'll speak in general terms here. Uh, I think if if a if a lawyer is in the criminal defense business, it is his duty, his or her duty, to step up. Uh, certainly, there are business uh, considerations that a lawyer has to consider when taking on a case like this. But absent that, not for any other reason, uh, the lawyer should take the case. I, 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 but, I but, feel but, that. But, um, but Jose, I think this could, this kind of case could mean safety concerns to you and even your family, could it not? Isn't that a consideration? It could, you take, absolutely. You take on absolutely. Something like this? You take on those considerations, but you know, this line of, of work is a, is a selfless type of, of, of practice area. There are more lucrative practice areas that, that a lawyer can engage in and you usually do this line of work because you have the cause in your heart and not because you're out there looking for the buck or the limelight or anything like that. You're doing it because you believe that our Constitution needs defending. So, you know, you are not literally the soldier on the front line, but you're pretty darn close to it. And, and, and most people who do this work uh, do it with that type of dedication. Well, uh, I, I'm certainly in favor of defending the Constitution, but uh, I, I remember when you were in the middle of all that, and people were nice, were they? Jay? Well, no, they weren't nice, well, and they no. weren't nice. But you know what? Um, but you know what? You, it's like any other job. You know, if there if there is a doctor in the emergency room and an unsavory character comes in needing uh, medical attention, do they don't deny that. You do it. You do it. Yep, you you do, do it. your job. 